Our next company is focused on treating some of the deadliest cancers we know. I'm Joya Das coming to you from the New York Stock Exchange for Small Cap Nation. And with me today is Peter Culpepper, who is the CEO, acting CEO of Provectus, which trades here on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol PVCT. Welcome to you, Peter. Thank you so much, Joya. So, you know, when we're, tr when we're talking about cancer, of course, we want to be able to treat the actual issue that's affecting the body, but we also want to minimize side effects. So tell me a little bit about some of the products that you've got in the pipeline. Yes. So we are in two major therapeutic areas, oncology and dermatology. Mm -hmm. And in both of those therapeutic areas, it's very important to work with the immune system. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do in oncology is solid tumors. We're actually killing the disease mm -hmm. and helping the immune system respond properly to keep the disease from spreading more or to reduce the disease elsewhere in the body. And same thing in dermatology, mm -hmm. actually reduce the actual uh, uh, psoriasis or eczema and make sure that the immune system responds properly. So working with the body. Right, but and you've got, I mean, just a reading about, you've got an array of drugs that you've got in the pipeline, but tell me about the ones that are in the phase three trials, because those are probably the ones you're most excited about. We're in phase three for treating melanoma. Mm -hmm. So this is locally advanced cutaneous melanoma, stage three, B, 3C, 4, M1A melanoma. Right. So it, so fairly significant disease. It's not yet systemic. It's not in a visceral organ, but it's an unmet need. So there's not a standard of care. So it's very important to treat patients more effectively than what we have currently available for, for patients existing today. And then some of the some of the drugs that you have in the pipeline are, tr are still in phase one or phase two, but I believe that they're treating topical ailments. Yes, so we do have phase one, phase two, and topical, so that's dermatology, so that would be psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, so yes, so that's topical. And then we also have other solid tumor, so we've treated breast cancer mm -hmm. in a phase one. We're in a phase 1B expanded study, cancer is metastatic to the liver. Sure. There's a number of different challenges where disease goes to the liver or primary liver cancer. So we're treating those solid tumors in phase one and going into phase 1B2. And we're in phase 1B2 and combining our drug with Merck's Keytruda. Very exciting, that's an immunotherapy, same idea, help the immune system respond better by figuring out how to harness it. Now, what kind of market are we talking about? What kind of patient population? If we were to pick maybe the top three that you're most excited about, what size market is that? Yeah, that's a great question. So for the phase three, we're talking about in the West, so in North America, EU, Greater Europe, and then also Australia, 30,000 patients every year. So it's very serious amount of, 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 it's still an orphan designation mm -hmm. in the U.S., an orphan drug designation, but we're talking about 30,000 patients every year, and, the, and that's just incidence. Prevalence is much greater. For liver cancer, it's a growing threat also, so we're, we're also looking at thousands of patients in the U.S., but ex-U.S., we're looking at hundreds of thousands. So it's a real global issue, liver cancer. So for melanoma, liver cancer, and then other solid tumors, we have serious issues. And you're treating some very serious conditions, but on the lighter side, we're a very vain culture, and you've got some cosmetic uh, applications that are coming out for just treating stuff that are everyday problems. Well, and that's where dermatology comes in. Dermatology is very important, and what we don't have currently yet available in the market is a topical derm dermatological product mm -hmm. that can actually take care of the issue, like mm -hmm. your psoriasis or your eczema, take care of it by reducing the inflammation, and at the same time not hurt your immune system. So we reduce the inflammation, mm -hmm. help the psoriasis, atopic dermatitis resolve right. through our studies, and at the same time, keep the immune system from being suppressed. Mm -hmm. So both in cancer and dermatology, we are modulating the immune system in a way that's helpful for the body. But it sounds like you're also being a little bit innovative in the way you're delivering the drug. At pH 10, I think you're doing photo activation. What does that mean? Yes, and that's a good point. So mm -hmm. for topical, for the topical uh, a product, so for dermatology, we're using the, the benefit of the light. So it's, it's light sensitive, so the compound is put on your skin, right. and then the, it targets when it actually is applied. Mm -hmm. So the, ac the active ingredient, the API, is very preferential for just the improper cell growth, so the disease growth of the skin. That's what caused the psoriasis in the first place. Sure. So we're stick the, the drug sticks on the improper cell growth, and then when the light hits it, it activates and kills off that inflammation. Okay. So then, after the improper immune response, the anti-inflammation, so there's an anti-inflammation because of the light, 
and then the immune system responds properly, and that's very exciting for us to describe this mechanistically. Why is this actually happening? Right. So we've done a very important study where we can actually report out soon, hopefully even at the end of this year, on 2016, on what is happening in the body to allow that to happen. So that's we're taking advantage of the initial mechanism and the secondary mechanism, the light, on the skin application. And so it really comes down to quality of life, whether you're treating the more serious ailments versus the, y yes. the, the, the topical ones. Qual quality of life is very important for both areas. It's life-threatening for cancer. Mm -hmm. So here, quality of life, in our view, is still very important because we don't want to hurt the immune system in cancer and we don't want to hurt the immune system in, in dermatology. Right. So we actually help the person's system in both cases, mm -hmm. which is our focus. When patients win, we all win. Of course. So that's our of trademark. Course. When patients win, we all win. Yeah. And ultimately, nothing matters in life unless you can look the patient in the eye and say, here is a, a compound or a drug. Now it's an investigational drug, so we cannot make a claim as to safety and efficacy now. Right. But we want to look the patient in the eye and say, this drug, based on the data, will help your outcome, will improve your outcome. We want to be able to say that for many different solid tumors and for many different skin diseases like psoriasis or eczema. You were just off of a plane from Amsterdam. You were at yes. a series of biotech conferences in Europe. What kind of uh, value are you unlocking for shareholders as a result of that? Yeah, that's a very critical question. So as a small cap, biopharma, we're very focused on development, innovation. This is what American biopharmas are excelling at. We are the innovators. We're the ones that have the ability, the, cr the creative intelligence, and the flexibility to develop. We, however, talk to much larger companies about partnering. So we show the value, the proof of concept, and then we meet at these conferences. We meet with potential partners, much larger companies, that are good at distribution and commercialization. These are your development partners. Those are the, those are the development partners, or you could say co-development partners, or even ultimately, we would expect an acquirer as a, as a SEC listed company, or as a New York Stock Exchange company and as a public company. We say in our filings, we expect the, to, the commercialization to be done by a partner. Mm -hmm. We don't expect to do that ourselves, but we have to show the value. We have to show the relevance of what we're doing in oncology and dermatology. And so that's what we did last week this past few days, meet with potential partners. We're going to do that again next week. We do that regularly, talk to the key opinion leaders in the industry at, at potential partners, those companies, also the investigators, and of course the regulatory bodies. And before we leave that point, can I sort of generally, what are the trends right now in terms of the biotech industry? Yeah, that's a great question. I think finally, and this is so exciting, there's a, a true recognition, we have to work with a person's own immune system. We do not, so you hear about personalized medicine, mm -hmm. you hear about an immunomodulatory agent. It really has to be tailored to that person's It'd body. It either be tailored to the person's body or to make sure we do not harm the immune system. So first, do no harm. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here, Doya, is we're taking our compound, we're being able to specifically treat the disease mm -hmm. and work with the industry how to optimize that. So the industry is focused on working with the immune system. So what we're doing in our phase 1b2 study with Merck's Keytruda mm -hmm. is we're combining our drug, which can kill disease, with Merck's drug, which harnesses the immune system. It's a systemic immunotherapy. We're combining them. So the industry is focused on targeted, help the patient, but combination therapies. Because we're not finding, especially for late stage disease, stage 4 disease, that the combinations are, are that's where the action is. The, the drugs by themselves apparently are not good enough right now. Right. So the combination, how do you optimize an agent? You figure out how to combine it with another agent. Got it. And so that's where the buzz is in the industry. Mm -hmm. Rational combinations, and it, all, all that matters is improving the patient outcome. I remember when pain management became like a big yes. thing in, yes. in the healthcare industry. So this that's is like right. the next step. This is the next step. So we're going past pain management to the combination therapy for improving patient outcomes with primarily the systemic immunotherapies. We have a few seconds left. What is your uh, final message to investors? This is the most exciting time, not just in the industry, but I believe in the company, because we are in the last phase. We're in the phase three. We're working with large potential partners. We have a collaboration with Boehringer Ingelheim. We have a joint patent with Pfizer. We're working with Merck's drug, Keytruda, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more in store. So I encourage investors to stay tuned and watch as we deliver data 
throughout this year and into next. It's exciting times for you. Peter Culpepper, the CEO of Provectus, which trades here at the uh, New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol PVCT. Thank you for joining us on Small Cap Nation. I'm Joya Das coming to you from the New York Stock Exchange. For more interesting insights into companies, visit us at smallcapnation.com.